I'm waiting for people to to roll in. Jamie, Jamie's here. She's gonna be facilitating the chat. Damn, Jay Sean is here. Who else is here? Bree, I seen Kim pop in here. Yes. Oh yeah. It's gonna be. A, it's gonna be a good lot. All right. Let me turn this music off. Bang. Let me get this right. All right, y'all. Uh, if you can hear me, put a one in the chat. So I'm live both on Instagram and on YouTube. Let me move this. Uh, let me just. I'm doing this. I'm doing the boss right now. I'll put this over here. I need. I need to get a new holder for this. If you can hear me, put a one in the chat. I'm trying to just make sure that the audio is right. Boom. We're gonna do it like that. All right, so we good on Instagram. We good on YouTube. Okay. All right, so th so the live tonight is essentially about how to prepare your body for 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 the summer. All right, so it's about twelve weeks exactly until the summer, and uh, right now is the time to start dialing in. Right, I made a video about this. I'm pretty much going to go over the outline from the video. Right, but. I'm doing it live, so it'll give you guys an opportunity to ask any questions that you may have. Um, this is something that I started doing this year, right? I started my cut more intentional. I'm doing it in four-week stages, if you will. But the first thing I'm doing this year, I started doing this this year. I signed a contract. If, if you're on Instagram, I advise you to come over to YouTube. It's going to be a better experience. So I, I started this thing where I sign a contract and this is a, this is a mental trick, right? There's something ceremonial, if you will, about signing a contract about, about just mentally being intentional. I don't know, whatever your ceremony may look like, it may be a contract for you. It may be, I don't know what it may look like. I, I just love the idea of signing a contract and mentally locking yourself into your goal. It's one thing to kind of, want to do something it's, it's another thing to kind of have an intention but when you have an official document that you that you are binding yourself to this goal it mentally shifts your mind into a different uh a different space so that's something i did this year if you want a template for the contract go to my latest youtube video there's a, a link in the description where you can actually download the, the contract fill it in for yourself sign it and then Post it on your wall. Again, yo, weight loss, I want to say is 90% mental. It's 90% mental. If you can find a way to dial yourself in mentally, it makes the physical stuff, the diet, the exercise so much easier. But you you have to, you have to be in control of what's going on in here. It's a huge, huge part of it. All right, so first thing, sign the contract. Second thing. Hold on, let me check the chat real quick because I know I'm getting some super chats. I definitely want to show love to everybody who is supporting the channel with the super chats. All right, so the second thing, right? I start to track my food intake. Now, you have people online. Not everyone is a fan of tracking calories. I'm definitely an advocate for tracking calories. If you do not track your calories, like what gets measured gets managed. I'm going to say that again. What gets measured gets managed. So if you're not, uh, if you don't know what you're putting into your face, because it, at the end of the day, fat loss is a numbers game, right? It's about burning more calories than you consume, cre creating a calorie deficit. It's, it's, really, it's really that simple. I mean, obviously, there's other nuances to it, but for the most part, it's about creating a calorie deficit, right? And you do that by burning more calories than you consume. How do you know if you're burning more calories than you consume if you don't know how many calories you're burning? I mean, I'm sorry, you don't know how many calories you're consuming, right? So my fitness pal, the Lumen app, uh, eat it. I think I forget. Anyway, there's there's tons of different calorie counting apps. They're really, really good. You can scan them, it's easy. Obviously, it's meticulous. It's annoying. 
But that's another thing that sets that puts me into a, a, a mental space where I'm I'm extra attentive about the, the decisions I make when it comes to nutrition and when it comes to my exercise routine. Right. So first thing, sign a contract to yourself. Mentally lock yourself in. Make make a promise. Make, give it some sort of, sort of ceremonial uh, event that binds you to this. Right. Locks you in mentally. Second thing that locks me in mentally is committing to tracking uh, my food intake. Right. So that's the first two things I do. Contract. Download the app. Start tracking my food because I don't track my food all all winter long. Uh, so starting to do that step, it definitely uh, it puts me into that into a different mind space. All right, here's another question. I got a question here in the chat. All right, how long will it take you? Uh, think it takes us to lose twenty? What? Can you? So he's basically asking, can you lose one or two? I mean, can you lose twenty five pounds in one or two months? I would need to know how how much you weigh, uh, because yeah, that yeah, I don't know. Is it possible? Yes, but you definitely would have to be over. You know, have a significant amount of weight to lose. All right. Okay, so after you sign a contract, after you um, start to track your food intake, obviously, right? You want to calculate your calorie requirements. I even see, I mentioned tracking your food intake before you calculate your food requirements. I mean, your calorie requ requirements, because I like to spend the first week not even dieting. I'm just tracking my food intake to kind of get into the swing of tracking your food intake. And also I do that to test what my, what my calorie intake is at the moment, because I don't want to drop my calorie intake too far off the break. A lot of us, we go from eating three, 4,000 calories a day, and then all of a sudden you want to eat 1,800 calories a day, and then you wonder why your body is shutting down on you. You wonder why you're craving food in the middle of the night. You wonder why you have no energy, right? So you you definitely want to diet slowly. And that's the thing that I'm going to break down in these cycles, right? I have, I'm, I have 12 weeks. I'm giving myself 12 weeks, which means I have three, four-week uh, stages or, or, or cycles, if you will. And each stage I'm, a I'm able to ramp up my intensity with the amount of cardio that I'm doing with the amount of calories that I'm eating, but you want to be strategic about it. You don't want to start your cut at 1800 calories. And then by the time you get to week 12, what are you going to do? You can't, you have no room to, to drop your calories or to add more cardio. If you start off doing an hour of cardio every day and you're, and you're dropping your calories by a thousand calories. Like, no, start off slow, start off with a small calorie deficit and start off with a very little bit, bit of cardio. So for me personally, right. I like to start off with, with just committing to 7,000 steps a day. That's it. 7,000 steps a day for the first, for the first four weeks. That's all I'm doing. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm training four days a week, right? I'm doing weights four days a week and I'm doing 7,000 steps and I have a slight calorie deficit. I only have a 500 calorie deficit. That is it. You don't, you don't want to diet too aggressively. You don't want to, you don't want to burn out in the first few weeks. Pace is such an important thing to consider uh, when approaching weight loss, right? If you try to do too much too fast, you will burn out. You absolutely will burn out. So you you want to divide your your goal, and you know you want to spread it out in in as long of a time as you possibly can, right? Because the the more time you give yourself, the less intensity you have to approach it with, right? You you guys know my motto is consistency over intensity. So you want to give yourself time. You want to pace it so that you're not driving yourself crazy, all right? That's super duper important. All right. So the next thing. Right. After I sign my contract, I start to track my food intake. I, cal uh, I calculate my my calorie requirements. Right. The next thing I do, like I said, is, is uh, 7000 steps. I commit to doing 7000 steps every day for the for the for the month. Now, I'm not a, I don't love to do cardio, especially when it's starting to get warm outside. 
I just walk. Listen, let me tell y'all. Walking is one of the most underrated weight loss tools there is in existence. People think walking is not a legit exercise experience. It is. You got it all twisted. If you start to count your steps, 7,000 steps, 10,000 steps, 12,000 steps a day, that ish adds up. I am telling you, walking is the most underrated uh, weight loss tool, period. I know I probably just said that, but I, I'm saying that again for effect. It's so underrated. Get your steps. Get your steps. Don't sleep on walking. It is not a game. You will melt fat away simply just walking. And it's beautiful because everyone has access to walking, right? God, for, you know, God willing, you have legs. You just step outside your house and walk. You can listen to a podcast. You can talk on the phone. You know, if if you know if you have the resources, get a treadmill desk, right? Get a little a little walking treadmill, and you can put it right under your desk, and you can get your steps in while you walk while while you work. There's no excuse nowadays. There's there's always a way to get it done. There's always a way to get it done. All right, so um, start to track your your steps. If you have an iPhone, your iPhone is tracking your steps. I am a, a big advocate for smart devices, right? Smart, smart. You want to use technology in order to uh, keep yourself focused and, and to measure what's going on, right? You can measure your activity. You can measure your, your calories. You can measure your heart rate. There's so much information now that technology gives us that makes weight loss so much easier because it becomes less of a guessing game. You understand what is going on with you. You know how much... How many steps? You know what your heart rate is when you're exercising. You can use this information to, to, to monitor or to, to adjust your intensity or to lower things down and or or to make more to make changes from week to week, right? Because you have the information. Again, what gets measured gets managed. That is something that I live by in, in multiple areas of my life. I'm a journaler, I, I make sure I record details in everything in my business in my personal life in my fitness life what gets measured gets managed find a way to measure what it is you're doing if you want to make changes you have to you have to you have to have a, a, a view of the details you got to know what's going on you can't you cannot change what you can't see period if you don't know what's going on, if you don't know how many calories you're eating, if you don't know how many steps you're walking, how many, how, how long you're working out uh, each workout, how many calories are you burning during your workout, you don't know how to adjust things. You can't adjust things. So leverage technology. It's a powerful, powerful resource. Leverage the technology. Uh, it, it, it's it, like I said, it's definitely a tool that we definitely uh, need to really take advantage of. All right, so. Another thing I want to add, right? Make sure you guys are are intentional about your water intake. Water, water, it gets, it gets, sometimes I even forget, right, to drink enough water. Sometimes I forget to add that as a, as a part of the process. Like I, I up my water intake once I'm trying to be more uh, intentional about losing body fat. So water, get you a half gallon uh, water bottle. And attach that thing to your hip. If you see me, I'm with my water bottle. So that's another thing. Drink water. Have a plan. Write everything down, guys. If you have a specific goal, write down a plan. If you don't have a plan, if you plan, to, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. It's the truth. If you have the resources, you want to hire a coach. I hired a coach. I hire a coach every cut. Last year, no, the year before last, I hired Chris Jones. This year, I hired Cammy. You need to have a coach. For the, for the simple reason, right, the, the number one reason why I tell anybody to hire a coach is accountability. <laughs> you need accountability, guys. This thing, especially if it's not, if activity and, and eating right is not really a part of your life right now, it's not already a habit. It takes accountability in order to build new habits. It takes structure. You need to be plugged into a system. You need somebody that's going to say, hey, Frank, why haven't you worked out 
for the last four days. Hey, Frank, why aren't you tracking your food intake? Hey, Frank, send me your photos this week. Send me your weight this week. Let's make sure that you're making progress, right? I don't know why I chose the name Frank, but I ate a lot of hot dogs as a kid. That's probably why. Anyway, <laughs> so yes, I am currently taking online coaching uh, clients. Go to brickstraining.com and let's let's uh, let's work together. Schedule a call with me, and I can we can we can choose each other. I'm at the place now in my career, and I love this. I'm turning down clients. I get to choose who I want to work with because I only want to work with people who are serious, and that's why I do these calls myself. I want to make sure that I'm working with people who are serious. All right. So go to brickstraining.com, sign up for a discovery call. And uh, yeah, let's get it popping. All right. So, so back to how to get right for the summer. So I'm going to, I'm going to go back over the points again, right? First thing, sign a contract, sign a contract with yourself. This contract mentally locks you in. It, 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 it kind of puts your mind in a different state. You know, it's something magical about that, right? It's, this is something that I started doing this year. Another thing that helps you put yourself in a different mental space is you start to be, you start to track your food, but you're doing it with integrity. You're doing it consistently and you're doing it even when it's uncomfortable. I don't care if you eat three Big Macs, you got to put it in the app. And it's something about, actually being consistent with tracking your food and sometimes having to track things that isn't fun. it's not fun to track big macs <laughs> i'm not gonna hold you it is not a fun thing to do but what it does is when you track your big mac and you got an answer to what you eat the next time you're in this situation you're gonna think twice you're going to think twice. Do I want to eat this? Do I want to deal with the discomfort of having to put this Big Mac into my app? And it only works if you do it with integrity. You have to be consistent about tracking your food intake. If you're not consistent, you compromise the whole the whole system. Let me turn this light up a little bit. You compromise the entire system when you don't do it with integrity. So integrity is super duper important. But again, get the support if you need it. The accountability is, is, is super duper key. It's super duper key. So anyway, sign a contract. Second thing I do is start to track your food intake. It's, an, it's annoying. It's meticulous. It is a pain in the ass. I understand. Trust me, I understand. It is a pain in the ass. But it is it is it's almost necessary, especially if you want to really fully transform your body, because the, the thing about tracking your food intake, it helps you build calorie awareness. Right. It, it helps you learn how much you should be eating, what you're eating, and, and you get to learn because your body gives you feedback. Right? Your body gives you feedback. So if you're eating certain ca certain amount of calories, if you're eating a certain amount of carbs, a certain amount of protein, if you're eating at certain times, your body's going to tell you if that's if that's a yay or a nay. You just got to pay attention. And you learn so much about your body. You learn so much about your relationship with food when you track what you eat. Again, I'm going to say this again. I'm probably going to say it 10 more times on this live. What gets measured gets managed. And you need to manage what you're doing. If you want to change in any area of your life, you have to, you have to manage, you have to measure, you have to know what it is. You have to have a record of it. You have to have a journal. You have to have some information that allows you to make changes when you need to. You feel what I'm saying? But you, you got to know what's going on. You can't be in the dark about this stuff. You can't be guessing. You can't be using, I mean, here's the thing. I was about to shit on the, the, the hand portion Method. If the hand portion method works for you, beautiful. I love that for you. But the hand the hand uh, portion method doesn't work long term because when you start hitting these plateaus and you think you're in a plateau, but really it's because you're not in a caloric deficit or you're not adjusting your calories as you lose weight. Then let's see what that hand method is going to do for you. Is it going to be like, all right, I'm going to change from this? I don't know. I no, you can't adjust. 
So track your food. It's annoying. Create a system. And this is why I eat the same shit all the time. Not saying that that's for everybody, right? I eat the same foods. I, I, I plan in advance. I have a go-to few meals for every, you know, I have my go-to breakfast meal. I have my go-to min- dinner meal. I have my go-to snacks. I know how many calories are in it. It's already in my app. So when I'm tracking, all I do is hit two buttons. Boom, boom. Protein bar, 230 calories. Uh, oatmeal, 800 calories. Like it, it's already there. I have a system. I have a structure. The only way you get that is through tracking. It's through figuring out what type of meals you like, figuring out what's to eat, what type of meals you consume that are easiest for you to track, right? And this is not going to be forever because the thing about tracking your food intake, after a while, you start to, like I said, you build that calorie awareness and then you can get to the point where you can eyeball it. I still need the accountability of tracking because otherwise, if I'm walking past, like right now, there's a there's a bowl of of uh, of nuts, pause on my on my counter out there, right? When I'm tracking, I I will not just grab a handful of those nuts, <laughs> pause. I won't do it because I like I have calorie restrictions that are set into my brain. But when I'm not tracking, it's kind of like, yeah, okay, I'll grab them joints or, you know, I'll grab a handful of popcorn or I'll, I'll snack all day. Right. But when, when I'm tracking my food mentally, I'm not, e- I'm not even tempted because it's like, nah, that's going to throw my numbers off. And again, I know this may be annoying for some people. It may sound like a lot, but it works. The shit works, works. It works. It works. All right. Shout out to everybody that's on live on Instagram. I appreciate you guys. Shout out to all 143 people watching live on YouTube. I hope this is, um, I hope this has been, I hope this has given you some value and has helped you guys. I'm checking the, I'm checking the chat right now. Cause I haven't been looking at the chat. I appreciate you guys. My man, Jay Ski says, how do I intermittent? How do I intermittent fast if I work at night? 11 to 7. Sheesh. Mm. If you work 11 to 7, right? And you're and you're trying to get you're trying to get a 16. How many? It, it depends. If you're trying to get a 16 hour window, right? I would just split. So if you work from 11 to 7, that's eight hours. I would just stop eating four hours before I went to work and I wouldn't eat. Ah, damn, but you want to you want to eat when you get off. Damn, that's tough, bro. I don't know. I don't have an answer for you. I thought I had something for you, but I don't. I do not. All right. If you guys have questions, what do you think about fasting? Um, I'm an advocate for fasting. I fast. I fast every every day. I've been intermittent fasting now for probably about five or six years now, five or six years. And I am, I'm definitely an advocate for intermittent fasting. All right. What's the next, what's the, what's another question? Let's see. Does a high protein diet truly help with weight loss? Absolutely. A high protein diet helps with weight loss loss because I don't know if you guys have, have ever heard of the thermic effect of food right now, not all calories require the same amount of energy from your body to to metabolize it right to to digest to um yeah to metabolize it right but protein requires so much energy from your body that you actually burn more calories digesting and metabolizing protein than you do fats or carbs right and also protein helps you maintain muscle mass which obviously helps your metabolism. It helps you burn fat. The more, the, see, I'm able to consume more calories now that I have more muscle without gaining body fat than I could when I was fat, right? Because I have muscle mass. So w- when you build muscle, you can actually, your body is able to handle and requires more calories, which means you can eat more. So yes, high protein diets definitely, definitely work. All right, my man Jeff Marbury. He he said, um, 
for the to the guy working eleven to seven who's asking about the fasting. Build your fast around your sleep, which is good advice. So I guess take that same concept, right? If you're trying to fast sixteen hours, I don't know how many hours you sleep, but just stop eating a few hours. You know, just do the math, right? If you eat, if you sleep eight hours, you fast. You fast for eight hours after you wake up. I guess I don't know. That sounds like a nightmare. Uh, that definitely sounds like a nightmare, bro. I'm trying to help you, but I can't even mentally picture what the hell I would do. I definitely would quit that job. I know that's not your your uh, your approach, but all right. Let's see. Um, what about water with lemon juice in it? Does it help with weight loss? Um, no. I mean, if if it helps you drink more water, but that whole thing, all oh, lemon juice cuts fat, calorie deficits cut fat. That's that's what cuts fat. I mean, I don't know. I don't know the I don't know the science on that. So it's you know, those are one of those things that I'm just not a fan of all these antics. It sounds like an antic, like you know, you lose fat by creating a calorie deficit. That's how you do it. When you when you lost majority of your weight, did you drink once a week? Have one cheat day out the week? Uh yeah. I always had a well for the first 2 months I did not do any cheats. But after that, yeah, I had I had a I had a cheat meal, if you will, every single week, for sure. All right, next question. All right. All right. While I search questions, if anyone is interested in becoming one of my clients, go to brickstraining.com and sign up for a discovery call. I'm currently taking on online coaching uh, clients. I'm actually doing the calls myself. You will talk to me, but do not sign up if you are if you're not serious about uh, getting the support and you're not serious about committing to the process because I don't lose. When I take a client on, we win. And I don't want to take on clients who I can't win with, for sure. All right, here's another question. Is there such thing as too much cardio when trying to lose fat and maintain muscle? Uh, yes, for sure. There is definitely a, a such thing as too much cardio when you're trying to lose fat and maintain. You know why? Because for one, if you if you think about it, I don't know about you guys, but if I do too much cardio, I, it usually makes my it usually makes my appetite insane. Like I usually want to eat everything, so that's one aspect of um, adding too much cardio. How it can be a detriment to your weight loss efforts, and and then also you also. You, you're creating more of a calorie deficit, right? But see, your body adapts. Our bodies adapt to all of our activity, right? So if you start off doing an hour worth of cardio a day, you're not going to burn as much calories doing an hour of cardio a day a month later or two months later, right? So what you want to, so what happens is you, your body gets so used to the activity that it doesn't, it, it just, it, it adapts and it doesn't, it doesn't function in its same way. So you want to be intentional about slowly increasing your cardio intake. Uh, and I would focus on weights. I would focus on strength training, resistance training, whatever that looks like for you. If you're doing body weight circuits, uh, I would focus mainly on that. Cardio is great for your heart. But you can't go wrong with just walking and, and, and getting some solid full body lift days, right? You cannot go wrong with it. All right, I'm looking for some questions at on uh, in Instagram right now. So if you're on Instagram, you have a question, let's put it in the chat. How many meals did you eat after you break your fast? I only eat two meals a day. Well, actually, right now, I eat one meal a day. I eat one meal a day. I've been doing that now for... Maybe about a month. I snack all day, though. That's the thing. It's not like I'm going without food. I break my fast usually around 12 or 1 o'clock with, I don't know, a fruit, right? I eat fruit all day. I eat a protein bar. And then at night, I have a nice-sized meal that I absolutely crush. 
I absolutely crush. So yeah, that's my that's my my eating pattern right now. All right, let me go back to the comments on on YouTube. Let's see if I missed any questions. Oh, my man Scoop2427 with the ten dollar super chat. I appreciate that, bro. All right, what's up, Bricks? Love the channel. What are your thoughts on zero calorie sweeteners? Is too much of them bad for you? And do they break your fast after you consume them, depending on the ingredients? Great, great question. And uh, I really appreciate the super chat, brother. Um, I am definitely a person who consumes zero calorie sweeteners. Um, does it break your fast? Yes, it does. Technically, it breaks your fast. But here's the thing. When I started intermittent fasting, I didn't care technically if my fast was broken. I was just trying to go without calories for a period of time. Do you get the same physiological and, and the, you know, the, the psychological benefits of fasting, even though you're technically not fasted? Probably not. But you still will get the calorie deficiency benefits. So if it helps you go without calories and your goal is to use intermittent fasting for weight loss, then it's cool. You can, you can use it. I, I used to use, you know, carbonated drinks, right? Sweetened, artificially sweetened carbonated drinks to keep me through my fast. Was that the right thing? Who knows? I'm not judging it. It got me through it. And I'm not saying it's the healthiest thing to do, but if your goal is to lose fat and that helps you not eat, listen, do what you got to do, bro. There's a, listen, y'all, there's a difference between eating for fat loss and eating for health. Two totally different things, right? You want to find somewhere in the middle. You want to find somewhere in the middle. All right, I got another super chat, chat by my, from my man, Luke Kang. Let me find your super chat, brother. I think I missed it on the timeline. Here we go. What's good, Bricks? Have you ever checked your testosterone levels? My testosterone, I have never checked my testosterone levels, bro. And, um, yeah, <laughs> if it's based on my sex drive, I'm pretty sure my testosterone levels are fine. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're fine. Um, but I will matter of fact, that's Kimmy, put a note down, put a note. Let's, let's do a video. Can you can you hear me on Instagram now? I mean on YouTube. All right, let's see. Hold on. Audio. Yo. Okay, I'm back. All right, my bad, y'all. My bad, my bad. Okay, I'm back on YouTube. I'm back on Instagram. All right, perfect. Thank you, Kimmy. All right, so, oh yeah, Chelsea. I was saying, what's up to Chelsea? One of my one of my favorite online coaching clients. 
So Monet Amor asks, how many carbs do you eat? Should you eat in a day? I eat a lot of carbs, right? And and I to answer that, it depends on your carb tolerance. Everyone has different carb tolerance, and you just gotta experiment. Start off with forty percent of your your uh, calories being from carbs, and just monitor what your body does, right? It may take two or three weeks for you to figure out, or maybe a little longer than that. But you you again, you have to measure how many carbs you're eating. You have to monitor how many carbs you're eating. Uh, and with the information, right, from week to week, you can experiment with different carb levels, right? How is your um, your energy, right? What's what's How are you sleeping? Are you crashing in the middle of the day, right? What Are you actually losing body fat? Just start to experiment a little bit with that, and then uh, you can determine how many carbs you should be consuming but carbs are not the enemy and the thing another thing all not all carbs are created equal look up the glycemic index right you want to eat carbs that are on the lower end of the glycemic index like sweet potatoes and and all your browns your, your whole grains right but when we start thinking about white rice and white bread and and refined sugars and those type of carbs those type of carbs are, are metabolized a lot different than the lower glycemic index carbs. So just do a little research. Um, just do a little research. All right, let's get another question. Let me see. Swinney is the name said he's starting that says he's starting his weight loss journey tonight. That's what's up. Let's get it. It's no time like the present. There's no time like the present. All right. Is there another question? Can you shoot me the questions? If you have questions that I don't see, that I missed. All right, hold on. I'm trying to put another question on the screen. Okay. How many how many hours for your intimate? intermittent fasting do you take heavy meals to break your fast me personally nowadays i don't break my fast with heavy meals i break my fast with fruit that's the first thing i eat but when i do extended fasts i'm very intentional about um what i break my fast with um but i used to i used to break my fast with a big ass but here's the thing right when i used to before i switched to one meal a day I would break my fast at about 12 or one o'clock and I would eat a big ass meal. I mean, 1200 calories, probably 60 grams of carbs. And what it would do, and this is why I started eating one meal a day, it would knock my ass out. My, my insulin would go through the roof. And then once my insulin came down, I would crash. So no, I would not, I, I wouldn't suggest breaking your fast with a big ass meal. Unless you're ready to go night night, because that's what it did to me. For sure. How often should you weigh yourself? Now that depends. That's a great question. I'm a, you know, strictly. I see your question. I'm gonna get to that real quick. Hold hold tight, because that's a great question. Um, I'm gonna get to that in a second. But how often should you weigh yourself? Now, this depends on your relationship with the scale. All right, because I think the scale is another added um, accountability tool, right? Because if you're weighing yourself consistently, it's more information. So it's not just accountability. It's also, it's giving you feedback based, it's giving you real-time daily feedback based on what you eat. But you also got to understand that the scale is temperamental. The scale is going to go up and down and it does, it has very little to do sometimes with how well you're doing, right? It has little to do with if you're eating right, if you're, Sometimes you're consuming more, you have more water. Sometimes you have higher soda, sodium levels, so you're retaining water. Sometimes, you know, you'll eat a quote unquote cheat meal, right? And then the next day you'll put on four pounds, but it's not four pounds. Sometimes it's just, you're you're inflamed, right? Sometimes it's just water. Sometimes it's sodium. Some, it's just so many factors, right? And sometimes also, 
in the beginning of your weight loss journey, you could be losing body fat, but also putting on muscle, right? If you're a newbie, you could be putting on muscle. So the scale may not move much, right? Because you're putting on muscle mass and you'll get on the scale and you think, oh, damn, I worked all, you know, I worked hard all month and I lost two pounds. Yeah, you you may have lost a significant amount of body fat and you may be putting on muscle. So I like to do pictures and I also like to do measurements. Measurements is a way better way to track your progress um, than, you know, way better than just relying on the scale alone, for sure. All right. His question was, how do you change your mindset to transform your body? How do you change your mindset? That is a, that's a great question. And hold on. Well, I'm, hold that thought. I got you, brother. I'm going to get to that question, Scoop, in a second. How do you change your, how do you change your mindset to transform your body? For one, right, the first thing you have to do is understand your current mindset, right? Understand the way that you think and you have to develop self-awareness. A lot of us are walking around and we don't even know ourselves. We don't know why our relationship with food is the way it is. We don't understand why uh, we don't see our own self limitations. We don't we don't know ourselves. We don't know the patterns of our mind. We don't understand what that inner voice, where that comes from. We are just so in the dark about things. So the first step to transforming your body through transforming your mind is to understand your mind. Take some time to observe what's going on in your head. You could do that through journaling. It's, a mo it's just one of the most powerful tools that gives you access to the insights of your own mind. Journal. Meditation. I'm a big advocate for both of those practices. They are powerful tools. I do them both every day, literally every day. So step one, transforming your, uh, changing your mindset is to understand your mind uh, and, and try to recognize things that you need to unlearn. I'm going to say that again. You need to recognize things that you need to unlearn because you cannot input new information if it's already full of shit that you think you know that hasn't been working. You got to get rid of a lot of it, right? So to change your mindset, you got to unlearn a lot of the things that, that you've been taught that aren't serving you anymore, right? And you unlearn by recognizing beliefs and attitudes and, and identifying thoughts that lead you nowhere. <laughs> I'm not even trying, you know, uh, like it may sound, um, you, it may sound it, it, like I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm not being facetious. Like you have to really pay attention to this stuff, to this stuff. My man, my man, JR said, ask yourself why you're doing it. That's another thing. Understanding your why. Right, if you want to change your mind and you want to change your body, you have to have the right fuel. If you're doing it for the, for shallow reasons, shallow reasons, let's not get it twisted. It's going to help you initially. It'll help get the ball rolling, right? For me, I wanted to prove my, my ex that I would, you know, I can be successful without her. I can look good without her, right? It was something that motivated me at first, but if I was relying on that sort of motivation, it would have never taken me to the finish line. It would have never taken me to the finish line. So recognize or identify a strong enough reason why you want to lose weight. If it's just to fit in some skinny jeans, it's not going to be it. If it's just so that you have your shirt off at the beach, it's not going to be enough. I'm telling you, it's not going to be enough. It has to be something that is meaningful, something that is, it's either got to be life-threatening or it got to be something that, matters deeply to you. Like for me, it was my children. Like for me, it was my health. It was, it was wanting to be a good example for my family. Like it has to be something that's deep. It has to be something that's super duper deep, right? So identify your why, um, journal, get to know yourself. And then also 
you want to, if you want to change how you think, you want to hang out with people who think in the way that you want to think, right? You, you, you are what they say, you, you're the, the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So if you want to change, if you want to make more money, you want to lose weight, you want to be healthier, you want to, you, you have to hang out with people who are doing those things. That's how you learn. We are, a, we are creatures of community and we learn way more from each other than we do probably from books. So if you want, you got to get friends, go to the gym and make friends with the fit people, start to hang out with the fit people because they're not the ones who are in the bars eating and drinking alcohol all weekend. They're out hiking, they're kayaking, they're mountain climbing. They are going for walks, they're roller skating, they're skateboarding, they're bikes, bicycling on the weekends. That's fun for them, right? You want to do different things and hang out with different people if you want to change your mindset. Another way to change your mindset is to educate yourself. You got to read books, read, read things. We make decisions with what we know, right? Your life is simply a compilation of the decisions you made. So what do you make decisions with? With the information that's in your head, with your attitudes, with your beliefs, right? With your, with your knowledge, with your wisdom. So if you want to make better life decisions, you have to give yourself more information to use to make better decisions with. So read books, become a part of masterminds, get a mentor, educate yourself, educate yourself, give up sports, give up movies and fucking Netflix. Stop watching that shit. Give yourself a break for a month, for two months, for six months, whatever. Stop. Stop consuming. Spend all of your time doing things that feed you and fuel you and grow you in some way for a period of time. Give up leisure. Give up pleasure. Give up sex. Give up all the shit that mucks your mind out. Give it up. For a while, if you want to change your mindset, I'm on a rant right now. I'm a, I'm gonna get off my pulpit, but um, yeah, it's 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 work, it's work, it's intention, it's getting to know yourself, it's changing your surroundings. You know, it's 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 definitely a process. It's a process, and you gotta want it bad enough, and you gotta be doing it for the right reasons, for sure. All right. Enjoy the journey. You live once. Make the first step and keep going. I love that, Liu Kang. That's some good advice right there, brother. That's some good advice. I appreciate the uh, the question, Strictly Hustling. That's love, brother. All right. Um, what is good motivation to use that you can't, that you can think of that helps motivations? Huh? Okay. So he's asking what's the good motivation. So here's the thing, man, about motivation. Motivation is, is, is not, is, yo, don't depend on motivation. Motivation is so temperamental. It's so fleeting. It comes, it goes, it's here, it's gone. Like you cannot depend on motivation. If you only think about what you, if you only did the things that you were motivated to do, if I only did the things that I was motivated to do, my life would be some shit right now. My life would be trash. If I only did the things that I felt motivated to do all the time. So, yes, you want to leverage motivation in the beginning. You want to use it to get some momentum going. But ultimately, you have to form habits and you have to use discipline and willpower to form habits. That's the thing. I don't I don't it don't require I don't need motivation to go to the gym. I don't. Because it's now an ingrained habit of mind. If I don't go to the gym, it, like I feel off. Like it feels abnormal because it's something that I've done at least five times a week for the last 10 years of my life. So now it's like when I don't exercise, my body's like, bro, what are you doing? What, what, what are you what are you doing? So you want to be intentional. Do not depend on motivation. It is some garbage. Motiv motivation is garbage. You develop discipline, develop willpower. Th those are the things that will get you to the finish line. Motivation will not get you there. Trust me when I tell you that. Motivation will not get you there. 
for everybody who is on Instagram, you will have a better experience if you if you check in with me on YouTube. I'm on YouTube. That's why I'm holding this mic. I'm not. I'm on both YouTube and Instagram right now. Shout out to everybody who checked in. I'm going to take some more questions before I hop off because I am hungry. I didn't eat my meal today. Doing it anyway. Talk your shit, Scoop. It's always the people with the super chats. Listen, I'm not even going to get into that. Scoop, I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you. Discipline over motivation. That's a fact. Discipline over motivation. Only because you said, please, Batman. <laughs> How do I be consistent working out without being sore? How can you build muscle while building mass? Huh? Okay. I'm going to answer this as best as I can with what I understand about what you're asking. I'm going to pin your comment right here. Um, I'm talking to Instagram right now, YouTube. I'm going to get to your question in a second. That's a good question. How can you be consistent without being sore? Here's the thing. If you watch any of my content, you know that consistency is the thing that I prioritize over intensity, right? Consistency over intensity. So with that being said, if you are new to exercise, you haven't been exercising, this is your first week, your first day, your first month, whatever. If you went so hard with intensity that the next day you are so sore that it's discouraging you from exercising again, then you went too hard. You did too much. I, I hate that people use feeling sore as, especially for, if you're bodybuilding, that's something else. But if your goal is to create a habit of exercise, you want to be healthy, you want to build a strong body, and you just want to be a regular person who just treats his body well, you don't ever have to be sore. You don't have to be sore. Being sore is not this badge of honor. It is not. It probably means that you did something a little bit too much. A little soreness, yes. But if it's to the point where you can't move your arms, if it's to the point where it's affecting you mentally, if it's to the point where it's affecting you and it's like, yo, I'm so sore, I cannot go to the gym, then you did too much. Then you absolutely did too much. Candace, can you text Matt for me and tell him that I'm on live? Because he's probably going to try to call me back. Please. No pain, no gain. Listen, that that's some bullshit. That that one line right there has has discouraged more people than anything else. Because it's not true. It is not true. The whole no pain, no gain shit has probably um, effed up our our mindsets. Because it doesn't have to be painful. And a lot of people are discouraged because they think it's painful. It's not. You just gotta you just gotta move your body. You have to move your body. Start off slow. You can start adding that intensity as you get a little bit deeper into your journey and you become, it's a habit. See, once you make exercise a habit, that's when you can start being intense. That's when you can start setting, you know, personal records. That's when you can start doing the most. Because at that point, it's a habit. It's not going to discourage you from going to the gym. Right? It's not going to discourage you to go to the gym. Oh, man, my man, chill. Thank you, brother. Good reminder. Let's get those likes up. I don't see the YouTube screen right now, so I don't know how many likes there is. But let's get those likes up. And if you're on Instagram right now, hit the heart button. Boom, 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 boom. Hit the hearts. Let me see the hearts going. Come on, y'all. Let's get the hearts going. Okay, I see one little two. Three. Let's go. Let's get them going. Let's get them going. Let's get them going. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. VV. Bricks has the best coaching system slash online support community and the knowledge to back it up like Juvenile. <laughs> Tap in with the insiders and purchase his programs. Thank you so much, Ms. V. As y'all can see, Ms. V is, uh, is, is definitely one of my favorite people, but she's tapped in with us. She is. Uh, I love that. I love that lady. I love her. Monica. 
Oh, stranger. What's up, stranger? All right. Best weight loss workouts in your opinion. Walking. Walking is the best weight workout weight loss there is. <laughs> the best weight loss workout there is. Because everybody can do it. You can do them. You can read books while you do it. You can talk on the phone while you do it. It's the easiest thing to be consistent with. And it's effective. It's effective. But that's not the answer I know you were looking for. Right? That's not the answer I know you were looking for. So I'm going to tell you. Compound exercises. Deadlifts, squats, um, lunges, bench press, any of the, the, the big seven compound axis movements, and then sprints. So that's just like walking on steroids, right? Sprints. Sprints will change your body <laughs> so fast, but you got to be careful because sprints, they beat your body up too. Let's go. Let's get the likes up. I appreciate that TCTV. Let's get the likes up. If yeah, it, it, that's the least y'all can do is hit the like button. I'm giving y'all a million dollars worth of game right now for free. So hit the like, hit the hearts. Everybody on Instagram, hit the hearts. I appreciate y'all. Thank you guys so much. All right, let me get to this question from Instagram. She says, "Breaks. How to maintain a 1,700 calorie diet for weight loss? A 387 pound guy." Bro, there's no way you should be eating 300, I mean, 1,700 calories. Bro, that, no. I don't even want to talk to you. You, you can't do that. You got to eat more. You cannot, you can't do that. You cannot do that. Shout out to my man, Luke Kane, with the $20 super chat. I appreciate you, brother. Bricks, I'm a full-time full ser food service trucker who still gets... Who get in three full body workouts a week? I work 65 hours. If I can do it, anyone can. Listen, bro, no excuse. If you want an excuse, you're gonna always find one. There is no listen, I there is no valid excuse. I know single moms with six kids with two jobs who still work out three, four, five times a week. I know people with no legs that still work their upper bodies several times per week. Like, what is your excuse? You have two legs, bro, you are winning. If you have 15 minutes, you can work out in your, in your bedroom. I don't want to hear the excuses. And the excuse about eating healthy is expensive is trash. You people, and it's usually the ones who are eating out every day or every other day who is usually or who are usually complaining about the price of healthy food. Cut it out. It is no longer valid. The excuses are no longer valid. I don't care what is going on. Everybody can walk and everybody can shop with circulars. <laughs> See what's on sale and eat that. Are you going to have the most elaborate diet? Probably not. There were weeks I had $50 to my name to eat all week. I made it work. I made it work. You just got to decide not to allow excuses to live in your head. You cannot, you, you just can't let them live there. This doesn't work like that. Get rid of the excuses. Luke Kang, thank you for the super chat, brother. I appreciate that. And salute to you, bro. My man is on the road 65 hours a week and he still works out. He still gets in three full body days a week. Come on, y'all. Brickstraining.com. I'm taking on online coaching clients right now. Go to Brickstraining.com. Fill out the, the form. Schedule a call. You will talk to me. Do not schedule a call. I don't want your money if you're not ready to commit to the process. I don't want your money. I, I, I swear I mean that. I mean that. I mean that because we are creating transformations over here. And I don't it's I don't care if you have the money. I don't want it. I don't want I don't want that client. I have I've had clients who pay me and they never check in for their workouts. They never use I don't want to work with you. Don't. You're not ready. I, it's okay. I'm not judging you. You're not ready. I've been there. I understand that. It's okay. It is okay. 
Just holler at me when you are ready to commit. And that doesn't mean when you're ready to be perfect. That's not what I'm asking you for. I'm asking you to commit. I'm asking you to give me your best effort. Not give me, give yourself your best effort. If you're ready to give yourself your best effort and you're ready to honor the process and to be patient and to be diligent about forming new habits and, and to and to honor the integrity of the accountability system, then go to brickstraining.com, sign up for a discovery call. Let's make it happen. I love, I don't call it my ego, whatever. I love being a part of people's transformations. We have a powerful system. We've been doing this now for eight years. We have a powerful system. You need systems. You need structure. You need accountability, guys. You don't have to do it by yourself. I did not do it by myself. I had a coach. I had two coaches. You need help. I have coaches in, in, in almost every area of my life, a coach or a mentor. I need it. I'm a big advocate for coaching. Go to brickstraining.com. Get your body ready. Let's get ready for this. Listen, I'm put a one in the chat if you know what that season means. Put a one in the chat if you know what that season means. For sure. Put a one in it because listen, this year I am me and my lady are cutting TF up. Boy, I'm coming to a beach near you. Margarita in hand. Let's get it. Put a one in the chat if you know what that season is. Let's go. Yo, y'all lit on Instagram. Instagram is lit right there. I mean, not Instagram, uh, YouTube. Okay, I see the ones coming through on Instagram too. Let's go. That season. It's that, yo, we got to get ready for that season. That season is upon us. We're about 12 weeks out, 11 weeks out from summer. It is the perfect time to start getting yourself right. Miami ain't safe. You better tell them, school. I'm cutting. I'm I'm tearing Miami up. I'm tearing LA up. I'm tearing Austin up. I'm tearing New York up all summer. I'm taking my kids to DR. Taking my kids to DR in June. I'm probably going to Italy this summer. I want to go to Australia this summer. We cutting up. It's that season. I'm taking that season to the next level this year. To the next level. All right, guys. I'm about to hop off. I appreciate everybody on YouTube. I appreciate I appreciate everybody on Instagram. Oh, Pensacola. Yeah, definitely in Pensacola this year for Thought Season. Yes. Love you guys. I will see you next time.